recall from the initial video that I posted on Canvas regarding linear models, um, how I described how we come up with this line, either using the high-low method or uh, the least squares regression method. In any case, when you come up with that model, the idea is to try to minimize the error and hopefully your line or your estimated linear model fits those actual data points appropriately. So for the question that you guys are working on right now, it's, it's kind of, it's the same idea uh, where if, if I were to grab this line to describe the data that you're seeing right here, I would probably come up with a line like this or something to this effect to minimize the error. But if we are, if we could reconsider this and we look at the scatter plot here, we notice that there's some behavior going on. Let me get rid of the line here. There's some behavior going on here that's real flat. Um, <clears throat> and another type of behavior going on here that's a little bit different. So if we wanted to come up with a better model, we would simply uh, come up with two models perhaps, you know, and then define a relevant range around here where the data would fit this estimated model best. And then for the area where we see a positive slope, perhaps we have a, a different model for it right there. So for this purpose, it is beneficial to identify different ranges to describe different data. So the use of the scatter plot helps us in this regard. Uh, if I have to describe costs for activity related to this range right here, then this would be my linear model. And then anytime I'm outside of that range, this model is no longer applicable. Then we would say if you're producing at this or selling at this level, your linear model should be this. And that's the importance of why we want to visualize the data.